What brings me here today is a post that is very relatable, I think, for some people. And it is a common issue that people ask me about which is weird because I haven't figured this one out yet. Uh, I've learned a lot of things with it, but I don't have the answers because I don't know that there are answers, but I'm going to share it with you. You tell me if you relate. I'm exhausted. 15 to 20 applications a day. Almost no responses. Ghosted by companies in the middle of the process. Now think of this continually since May. To put it into perspective, over 2,500 applications, assessments, profiles created, 20 different iterations of resumes, Two jobs offered and then canceled due to budget. Unemployment is gone and I feel more worthless than ever. This is not somebody that has messaged this to me, but I get this comment. I've gotten a lot in my comments when I ask for questions or I share my ADHD tips or I'm talking about anything of this nature. People usually message me and they'll talk about their anxiety as it relates to work and interviews and jobs. And I'm just going to jump right into the things that I think might help somebody else. First of all, it's not you. This climate that we are in, at least in the U.S., is not singling anybody out. It's from everybody that I have talked to, it affects literally everybody and I just realized I'm not even looking at my the right camera. I'm looking at the vertical one, but whatever. We can figure it out, right? Distracted. I'm not somebody that like has all the answers, but I can tell you what's helped me get through them. And it's going to sound really stupid, but not worrying about it is the first step. And it sounds so crazy, especially if you are in need of like money or income or your credit card debt's racking up and you're starting to get serious anxiety and you feel like you can't sleep and think about anything else. So it just leads to more anxiety, which doesn't help you if you're going on a job interview. I, I'm going to make you feel better about your life right now. I have had several interviews that I have absolutely bombed strictly because of my anxiety. I have a pretty impressive resume to say the least. And yet somehow every time I try to have an interview, I seem to just let my negative brain take over and I panic. And sometimes <laughs> I'm also way too honest. Like I am not somebody that is I just don't like to bullshit and I don't like to play the game. And that's my problem is you have to manipulate the game a little bit in any sort of climate. If you're interviewing for a job, it, it's a, it's, it's a game of manipulation. And so my advice to you, my tip number one is to play the f***ing game. And some people might not like me saying that, but I've learned that a lot of these companies are using AI to screen your resumes. They are posting jobs that aren't real on LinkedIn. They're making you not only submit your resume and application, but then they're making you ma manually put it in into their interview system. And they're making you jump through all of these hoops just to get a chance at working for them. And let's be honest, if you end up starting to work for them, you're probably, if you're like me, going to be giving way too much of yourself. You're going to be working really hard and you're probably going to try and be a loyal employee. Most people want to work. <laughs> I think the problem that I have is with the argument that no one wants to work. My counter to that is people want to work. They just don't want to be treated like shit. And... I think a lot for a lot of us during the pandemic with so many people being laid off and so many people having to work overtime if they were essential workers and for people being demanded to come back into the workforce or into the workplace when it was very clear that their job description didn't require it. It, I think a lot of people woke up to the fact that they are disposable at the end of the day. And when it really comes down to it, what matters most are people's mental health and people's boundaries and people's having a healthy work-life balance. And I feel like 
there's this interesting tension right now between a, a, a need for workers and a shit ton of workers that are saying, we don't want to be mistreated anymore. And it, people get mad or defensive when I even like talk about it from the em employee side, from the worker side. And, I, you know, I see both sides of the argument, but I, I don't think it's a people just don't want to work. People just don't want to work at jobs that don't satisfy them anymore and not at least be treated with some basic common human fucking decent decency like it doesn't seem that hard to me so wow i really took a tangent i hate how i do this i hate how i do this there was a point in there somewhere there was there was a point in there somewhere but i guess my point is use ai use chat gpt to fucking draft your resume who gives a fuck? like at this point if they're just going to keep using all of these lazy ass tactics to filter out generic resumes so that they get the best candidates, which let's be honest, I'm going to say it, said it all along. The application process, it's not conducive to people with anxiety. It's not conducive to people with ADHD. It's not conducive to people with dyslexia. Like you're judging people based off of one document. I'm just ready for some human compassion element to be incorporated back into the job application process. And if you're going through this right now, you seriously are not alone. I feel like it's something with the market right now and I, do, I wouldn't take it personally. And if you feel like you're struggling and you feel like you can't get ahead and you feel like you're just drowning, uh, I'm gonna need you to take a deep breath. Look at my ADHD tips video that I, I just did. Let me know if you have any questions about it. Drink your fucking water and give yourself compassion today because, and I can have a bunch of others. I don't, how long were we talking for? Uh, we're okay. Do we like when I riff or do we like when I have a script? I don't know that I have had a script Maybe only with my guest interviews, but let me know. Let me know if this should be more organized. I feel like as an ADHD podcast, this shouldn't be organized, but use ChatGPT, but spell check. Use your spell check, use your brain, look at it. The only reason I use ChatGPT to gen, like redo my resume is because I had way too much on there because my job responsibilities in the past have literally been worth 20 pages worth and when I'm trying to explain that I can do it all I want to include more and the one thing that I have learned is less is more less is more on your resume less is more in your interviews say less just be like yes no yes here's an example keep it short no need to justify if there's an if there's a gap in your resume took some time off it. Who gives a shit? If they want to question it, you don't owe them any answer at all. Make them want you. And I hate, I hate, I hate giving this advice because it's the same advice that I, I think leads to what's wrong in the dating world right now is a bunch of people chasing other people that don't want them. And you have to play the game in order for people certain people to want you and I don't agree with that at all and so same thing with jobs and interviews why would I you know wouldn't you want somebody that's enthusiastic no they want somebody that doesn't want this job which is and any time I've act acted like I didn't want the job I got the interviews and I continued anytime I well I blew this one but I had an interview for Apple and this was right around the time like I was so down on my luck and oh <laughs> I choked like I literally something happened it was and it was something that was so minor it was like my cat it was it was probably the fucking cat I think it was the cat he like went to almost knock something out and it was a zoom interview and I remember I choked I forgot ever and then the panic set in so then it just like it's almost like a sinkhole of like worry and anxiety that just like overcame me. And they, uh, they gave me the most 
patronizing, you know, back half of that interview when I was like, I'm sorry, guys. Like, I don't know what that was, you know, and of course I didn't get the job after that. I probably shouldn't have told them that I, you know, when they asked me if I don't know the answer to a legal question, what do I do? And I said, I Google it. But that's what every f***ing lawyer does. I don't like, I just said what everybody does. The first place I go is f***ing Google. If you have been on a legal database, you have to have so much information to get your answer. Google's a great starting point. I'm not saying I go to the first result, I filter. But there was another tangent. Where I have noticed the best responses or the biggest opportunities has been from networking. And it sounds stupid and it sounds something that comes from privilege and it sounds like something that only certain people with access have. That's not true. That last part's not true. You can pop us. Just when the brain muscles start firing, like just fucking bullshit. I hate to sound, I just get good at being like, yeah, whatever, no big deal. Not interested, not that. Cause when you worry is when you slip up and you get nervous, just like be like universe, take the wheel, have fun. Jesus, take the wheel. That's a little bit. I want to exclude, you know, people are Allah, take the wheel. I'll cut that one out. Oh, that's one group of people you don't want to piss off, huh? Especially right now. I think right now is a great time to, it's going to sound so cheesy, but like start investing in yourself. And I mean, I've been using social media for a long time. And I'm still kind of getting used to it and figuring it out. But like if you have a business or a creative idea or you're a writer or you have a skill set that doesn't necessarily need corporate support, start your own shit. And now's a great time to start your own shit. And right now, I mean, if you're not making money, you might as well just like start trying to do the stuff that you might be dreaming about right now. And I think that'll at least keep you busy. And... I think it'll definitely help. It's funny because one of my acting coaches from back in the day always had this piece of advice and I always loved it because it's so dead on. He always said, you know, in addition to your acting journey, your dance journey, whatever it is, do something else. And he shares this example of this one actor, I can't remember his name, who essentially went, you know, to Africa or another part of the country. Maybe it was like, it was a third world country. I don't remember, maybe a Vietnam or something. And... I ended up adopting a child and it sounds very, sounds very, um, like I don't like the idea of like somebody, but I don't think it was like that. I think he had such an amazing experience and felt for all of those things that he saw and witnessed that it gave him a new appreciation for his work when he came back that he started booking a whole bunch of jobs and it was just out of him not needing to be tied to this industry or business or occupation or success in whatever he was doing. But that energy that he had from having these other bigger picture experiences really kind of, I think, changed his mood and his energy, which then in turn presented all of these open opportunities to him. And I, I don't like, there could be many different contributing factor, factors to it, but I think, this idea of having something else that gives you perspective, that keeps you grounded, that keeps you busy, will normally help you in the other avenues that you've probably been obsessing over, like mindlessly having anxiety over. So pick up a, a, a pickleball habit, or, you know, I'm trying to st think of stuff that's like relatively low cost, because if you're looking for a job, chances are you're not going to be wanting to spend a bunch of money on stuff, but like, I don't know, buy a spray paint can, start spray painting pop, pop potholes in your area, so at least the, the people can come. That's what I heard. It was the, the, the guy that was spray painting dicks on pot, pot, potholes in LA so they would be forced to come 
cover it up and not only cover it up but fix the pothole. That man's doing God's work. And I'm going to just start doing that just for fun. That's got to feel, feel pretty rewarding to be like, how many dicks have I left all over L.A. County? Oh, shit, they're all fucking covered up. That's how much, that's how much our country just hates, hates the, the, the human body, human body parts. Oh, fucking up everybody's cars in L.A.? No one gives a shit. But a dick? No, no, no. No, no, no. Not today. I've lost my train of thought. I've no I know for a fact I've taken so many tangents. Uh this is this is the first podcast of its kind. This is the first unorganized. I saw somebody with the name like a, a pod with no niche the other day and I was like, fuck! Somebody stole my fucking tagline. I can come up with another. Let me know your thoughts. Let's have a chat in the in the comment section. I wow. I was finishing a sentence and I went into another sentence. And I didn't wrap up either, and somehow I went into, like, a third sentence. The other thing I wanted to say, really quickly. I have been able to make my own income in the last couple of years. And so, more so, I don't, I don't know if it was because I was healing. Like, I was still trying to, like, recover and deal with all this baggage and mental trauma and like really get into my routine. But I did notice just in the last couple of months, my interviews massively changing. And I think it's a couple of reasons. One, I have income. So, and I have income that I've been able to generate on my own. So I genuinely don't have this, this desperation for a job like I did at one point. And so, it's helped because when I get on calls with people, A, I have so much else going on that I don't really have time to really obsess over the interview or my resume or whatever I've done. By the way, it's such bullshit that they do that make you manually put in that shit. And I'm ready to start a petition to make it illegal to make somebody manually enter the information that they put on a resume that you can autofill, the, 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 the service autofills on its own anyway. You can extract the information yourself. Why are you having me do it? Secondly, I think the other reason is because uh, I've really worked on my mental health <laughs> as much as this video would like to suggest otherwise. I have gotten really good at my meditation. I have really gotten good at um, when anytime the negative self-talk starts to come in, I tell it to fuck off and we move on with our day. And I've really been fighting that negative self-talk a lot in the last two months because I really, really let myself get in my own way in the last couple of years, especially with like social media stuff. Like I'd, I'd make all this content and then I have no courage to post it. And because I was afraid that if something went viral, that it would go horribly wrong, which is the most absurd way to think. I've been a lot calmer. I've been a lot more centered. Uh, my brain has started to feel like it's gotten life back in it in terms of my thoughts, which always feel jumbled at times. And so that has really changed how everything else with my interviews like have gone. And frankly, at this point, I have to keep myself well-versed in interviews. Otherwise, if you lose it, it's really hard almost to kind of get it back. It's kind of like podcasting, <laughs> which we're getting better at. There could be a bunch of falsities that I could tell you that this is the right way to, to get and book your job, but I really don't think that this is something that any course will solve. I think it's a systemic problem. And hopefully that changes soon. I don't know what to do about it, but maybe we can have a discussion and maybe come up with something. So let me know.